everybody, it's your boy D from DNC Digital, and I'm back with another interview on the road to Tournament Out of Hell, presented by Mission Pro Wrestling in Buda, Texas, at Pinball's Kingdom, streaming live on the Title Match Network. What do you want, man? You want to say hi? Come here. Say hi to the people. Come here. Come on. Come on. What are you scared of? My dog doesn't want to say hi. Hey, what's going on, buddy? How you been? Hope all is well. I know you were uh, you were there yes or the other day when I was uh, interviewing Ali Gatto. Um, today we're going to be talking to uh, Vert Vixen. Um, Vert Vixen is uh, she's a professional wrestler and she's a gamer. And you know what? I gotta I gotta um, turn off my ringer here. Can I do that? There it is. Cool. Uh, Vert Vixen is a uh, professional wrestler and a gamer. She was a former host of GameStop TV. Um, I interviewed her last time for uh, the the uh, Hell Hath No Fury show. So she's actually my first uh, repeat uh, interview as far as uh, Mission Pro Wrestling goes. Say what's up, man. Say hi. There he is. Look. Say hi to the people. Say what's up. That's Sinatra. And here she comes, Miss Vert Vixen, in the middle of training, and I appreciate her, her time today. So we're just going to be waiting on Vert Vixen. You sit there. Bro. Hey, what's going on, Vert? Hey, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. How you doing? I, lo I love the hat. That's so dope. Thank you. Thank you. It's cold now, so I have an excuse to wear a more uh, adorable adorable hats <laughs> uh, yeah I, I love the cold weather i can't i can't do this uh this texas heat i sweat in the shower out here i'm dying <laughs> i'm not meant for cold so i'm like can we go back to the 70 degree weather please <laughs> okay. okay i can't do all that stuff got a lot of people joining in already uh any of you guys want to ask for vixen any question uh just go ahead and uh leave a comment or excuse me leave a question in the comments how have you been Vert? because it's been a while since i talked to you it's been, I mean, I've been good. I'm exhausted. Like, I've just been training. <laughs> like, I'm actually at training right now. I stepped down let, to Yeah, let, to let's talk this, about so. that. Who, who are you training with today? Let, let the people know. Uh, so I am currently training with Rodney and Jazz. Um, and it's great that I can officially call them, and specifically Jazz, like, my trainer. Like, it's it's pretty incredible. I feel very grateful for this. Yeah, go, go ahead and elaborate on that. Jazz, I don't know if I've ever heard... I don't know if I was uh, ready for her to be so damn cool and so accessible and so like joking around and and I was just like, man, I, it's so weird to for me, you know, as a wrestling fan, to uh, get to interact with her and con be in constant contact with her. What's it like being in the ring with her and what kind of teacher is she? Uh, she's the sweetest. Like it's it's so. <laughs> I have never been in the ring with somebody who like scares me more with the way they like you know who they are in the ring and then she'll just like stop and be like yeah and so that's it and I'm like oh my god you're so <laughs> just... Rodney and Jazz are like the most patient understanding sweetest people I've ever met and like also the scariest in the ring it's it's an app it's it's crazy like it's absolutely crazy there's I was definitely intimidated when I first met them like when I very first met them um but they're like, like Rodney's like a big teddy bear and Jazz is the biggest sweetheart ever. And they're both such incredible teachers and both so patient, so patient. I'm so grateful. That's awesome. Uh, so you, you participated in the inaugural, well, more like the relaunch event for Mission Pro Wrestling, Hell Hath No Fury. Um, if you can sum it up in a sentence or two, what did that night feel like? There are so many layers of importance of that night. Can you uh, tell us what you felt like as a woman and as a professional wrestler on that night? Um, I mean, God, it was definitely one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had. Like from the moment that we got there, um, we helped set up and it, we had like a pre-meeting and the pre-meeting almost made me cry. You know, like it was just it was already emotional with all of us women there and just, you know, Mel talking about all of this amazing support she has and her just being such an incredible badass. Like it was, 
there was that. And then there was the show itself, which it was just banger after banger after banger. Every freaking woman killed it from commentary to talent to people behind the cameras, the people that were helping make the show run. Like everybody just made that show run so smoothly. So there's that. And then there, of course there was the end of the show where Thunder gave her incredible speech just and tears, just tears. Pain. Tears. I rewatched that video uh, that was Ray Zombie, I think that's his name, the little Ray documentary Zombie, yeah. that they Shout did. Shout out to Ray Zombie. He puts together an amazing, amazing, well-paced, well-put-together documentary that had me in tears earlier, or I'm sorry, excuse me, the other day when he released it. Yep. I rewatched uh, it, and I was crying, too, so don't worry. Like, I was there, and I was like, oh, it won't affect me that much, and, you know, like, because I cried that night, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm crying again. <laughs> like, so, how do you, yeah. uh, is is that one of the first times that me, you maybe found it difficult to separate the work from the actual experience? Because sometimes you got to go in there, you got to put your game face on, and you you can't let certain certain moments or certain events take you out of character. I mean, I know in those two speeches that you talk about, you were technically out of character, but have you felt any any more emotion that you did that night in any other event? I mean, I guess I have to say in general, though, I mean, yes, wrestling is work, um, and I treat everything I can as professionally as I can. Um, but there, I mean, when you're at a show, you're kind of just in, like, a different mentality. Like, yeah, it's work mode, but it's also taking in all the moments while you're there. So I was definitely trying to take in those moments while I was there. Um, but rewatching it, too, uh, at least, like, the short documentary and rewatching the show – it was a little bit of a different experience in the fact that I could step back and like watch as a fan, you know, yeah. and it hit me emotionally a little different. Like I'm so grateful to be a part of mission. I am so grateful to be a part of mission. Um, but as a woman and as like from a fan standpoint, I just think it's the freaking coolest. It's the coolest thing ever. Like, and I know other people, like I know other companies are going to start doing this. Um, but the way that, Mel and everybody who ran Mission Pro did it this time. It's it's like untouchable. I can't explain it. It's I'm really excited for the next show because of how good this like, this one was. How how you know after after the the amount of success that that first show had and like uh, you know speaking for myself, I I was I was honored to have my name attached to it as a sponsor, and I decided to just keep sponsoring because I believe in everything that this company wants to do. Can you, can you talk about maybe the parallel that like a, song, a music artist comes out and they have an amazing debut album, but now that second album is probably the most important because we do find out whether that artist is gonna stay around or if it was just more of a new kid on the block type of attention. How important is this second show to Mission Pro Wrestling? I mean, it's not my show, right? But personally, in my opinion, I definitely think it's really important. Um, but I can say that they do have a positive track record. Um, I mean, Sabotage was the beginning of it, right? And that show, it might not be run by them anymore, but it is still running. Um, and it's very popular. And then the, they ran, they had run the first show technically last year, which was a huge success. And then for them to bring the second show back, which was another success, in my opinion, just tells me that they just, they have an understanding of how to run a successful show. So yes, I do think this is important, but I also have to say that they've already damn well near proved themselves, you know, more than once in the fact of that they can run a badass show. Like, no freaking question in my mind. Zero question. And I know that all of the next shows to come are going to be just as good, if not better. If not better. Uh, you, you talked about those moments that uh, Thunder Rosa gave those two speeches, uh, both privately and publicly to the crowd, addressing the crowd and letting them know that, hey, we're here and we're going to stay. Um, was there a, a private moment maybe you had with her, one-on-one, -on -one, where you had a conversation about the night? Not that night um, specifically, but um, in general – I really look up to her and she's, uh, she's dropped by training a few times and she's talked to us personally and just really been this great mentor and this really great support. She really wants to push Texas women's wrestling. Like she wants this to the, like, she wants us to be it, you know, and she really wants to help all of us just 
get better and be better um, and really elevate women's wrestling in general. Uh, and I just, every, every chance that I just get to sit and listen to her talk, I'm so grateful because she's full of so much knowledge, so much knowledge. And it's definitely one of those things that I'm like, wow, talk about me being in the right place at the right time around the right people. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm from California. So the fact that I'm here wrestling in Texas and living close enough to San Antonio to, to be able to, you know, work with them one-on-one -on -one, to work with her one-on-one, -on -one, it's just a whole other different, it's on a whole other level. <laughs> like, uh, grateful. Uh, Very grateful. You're originally from California. Uh, you live in, in Texas now. Mm -hmm. So last time, at um, Hell Hath No Fury, it was Genocide who came from Colorado and she defeated Roxy in one of the matches. And now she's bringing about three other women from Colorado. And um, they are saying that it's a small community of female wrestlers in Colorado and they are very grateful to come to Texas. So how important are all these relationships getting together now as every show goes on? I think they're extremely important. I think that... Um Yes, we, we want to work everybody we can here in Texas, but I think that if we, as wrestlers in general, if you just limit yourself to one area and working the same people, you're, you're um, sacrificing what you could learn because uh, everybody teaches things differently. Everybody has different knowledge, um, even down to the way they work in the ring. There's different styles, and that's just within the different states here. That doesn't include going to Japan or Mexico or Canada or anywhere in Europe. Like That's all going to be different. Um, and then on top of it, too, in my opinion, yes, we're all trying to get to that place at the top. But at the end of the day, we're all sisters in wrestling. And this is a really, really hard business. And the more people that we all, the more people that support each other and help elevate each other and help bring each other up, the better we're all going to be as wrestlers. And the, the better matches we're going to have and the better shows we're going to do. And I no longer want people to look like, People look at women's wrestling sometimes and like, oh, it's just women's wrestling. I, I don't think any of us want that. I think we want you guys, like, we want people to look at us and be like, oh, these are women wrestlers. Or look at these wrestlers, you know? Like, it's I, us all working together like this, I think, allows everybody, too, to be taken on a more serious level because we train our butts off, <laughs> like, as hard as we can, you know? Um. So you are you have a uh, you also have a kind of cosplaying career. You know you you do have a lot of cosplay and you you post pictures and stuff. Um, now that Halloween is coming up, can you talk about your favorite Halloween costume you've ever gotten in? So I'm actually like maybe not dressing up for Halloween this year. <laughs> I may be doing like a Kigurumi like Pokemon thing or like I dressed up as like Shawn Michaels referee status. Uh, at my at the bull rope match we did, yeah, I, this, that's probably as far as you're gonna get me to go. Um, my favorite <laughs> Halloween costume, like not like a cosplay I've done, is when the original Pirates of the Caribbean came out. I dressed as Jack Sparrow, and nice. like not like a gender bent Jack Sparrow. Like I was like, I'm gonna be Jack Sparrow. No, you're gonna be <laughs> Jack Sparrow. Yeah. And I did like the beard and everything, and it was drawn on, and it was awful, but. It was what, like, I don't know when that movie came out, but I had to have been, like, 12 or 13 or, you know. Did you get a like good that. reaction out of it? I, my mom was very confused. <laughs> 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 and it was done so badly that a lot of people just didn't know who or what I was because I was wearing, like, I had stolen one of my dad's, like, button-ups and was like, it's a pirate shirt, but it was, like, a white button-up and, like, I had taken one of his ties and, like, tied it around my waist and it was... I, I, you wouldn't have been able to tell what I was. <laughs> uh, old, old Greg uh, CH says he needs to see this. If you can find any old pictures of yourself as Captain Jack Sparrow, little 12-year-old Vert Vixen, um, I would I love to, uh, to see. <laughs> I um, might have one buried on my computer somewhere, so maybe one day I'll share it. Maybe one day. Um, so um, when it... Uh, when it when it came to to that uh, when it came to that costume, was that before uh, you had an interest in um, in doing the cosplay stuff? Oh yeah, way before. I didn't start cosplaying until after college, um, or I guess the end of college. No, it was after college. I was working at that point, so I feel old. 
when did I graduate? <laughs> like 22, I think, 23 maybe is when I started cosplaying. Um, apparently, I just like to start everything later in life than I wish I had. Like wrestling. God, I wish I had started this 10 years ago. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you 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 did uh you did some hosting uh and you did your cosplay and you do game. Are you still doing the gaming thing now that uh like all all everybody's staying at home and stuff? Or... You mean like streaming? The streaming, yeah. So I've taken a break off streaming because I'm training Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and most of the times now sometimes I'll be booked on heavy metal Thursdays and sometimes I'll have shows on Saturdays and Sundays. So I literally just. I haven't had the time to stream and it sucks cause I miss it, but I'm also like rest <laughs> stream. Yeah. Like I need to just like mentally rest, you know? So hopefully once my training, um, I don't know, my training will probably never calm down. I'm probably just going to have to bite the bullet one day and be like, okay, I'm streaming again. And it's at these weird hours. So. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I remember I used to, I used to game when I first started my YouTube channel and I would do like, um, WWE 2K and Red Dead Redemption a lot, but those Red Dead videos would take so long because all these missions you had to go through, then you die sometimes, and then I didn't have all the editing software. I was just live on on YouTube, and but that, that's a that long game, stuff, bro. All day. The, those are long games too. That is not like a. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I think the only game I've streamed start to finish was the new SpongeBob. Oh no, Dark Siders. But those are, they're both short games. Like, <laughs> I speed ran Darksiders in like five hours. So, and Jesus. Um, <laughs> so uh, now you are returning to Mission Pro Wrestling. And um, you know what? Before we get into that, just about a month ago is when we spoke for the first time. We had the interview to go into, uh, um, excuse me, Hell Hath No Fury. And shows weren't back as yeah. much as they were uh, then. So how did it feel to have the crowd and how did it feel that wrestling is coming back little by little, the indie shows with the crowds? Honestly, amazing. Like, um, mind you, it is important that I say that Mission did do an amazing job making sure people were wearing their masks, that people were socially distanced. Um, they did a very, very good job with that. And the same precautions will be taken for this next show. Um, yes. But it did feel absolutely amazing because there's nothing like doing something and hearing the crowd respond. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just you pull her hair a little bit and they get angry. But or, or, you know, you hit this big move and you can you can hear them every time you hit something. And there's, you know, you get that you get that one, two, and then you hear the crowd go, oh, that should have been three. And it's just there's really nothing like that. There's just there's really nothing like it. And I missed it. I'm so glad that we're hopefully moving back towards some kind of something normal. I don't know. The world's all different now, so I have no idea. I, I spoke to uh, Ali Gatto uh, this past Sunday, I think. And uh, one question I've always wanted to ask everybody is, when the crowd comes back, do you feel like you're, like, let's say, you know, you're, you're finally back to a sold-out crowd. Let's just use AEW and WWE as an example. Those men and women who have been doing at the arena and, like, l you know, smaller crowds, do you think when it's sold out, that their eardrums will be like, holy shit, I forgot they used to be that loud. Or their feet will feel weird because they forgot about the vibration from the crowd that they used to be so used to, but now they've been away from it for so long. Do you think in a five senses kind of way that their body would be stimulated to a point that, they're, you know, I forgot what this felt like? Like overstimulated? They're like, what do I do? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's like riding a bike. I think it'll come back to them right away. Like, you know, they've, especially on that level, they've been doing it for so long with that many people. They're just, like, my guess is that it would be almost like being injected with adrenaline in a good way. You know, you, you get that, you get that rush, you get that high just of, like, this is what it feels like, again, to feel the emotions. I mean, not even, like, the roar of the crowd or, like, it, it would be to feel the emotions of the crowd. You know, that's got to be, that, in my opinion, would be crazier than just hearing them or like feeling the vibrations it would be you know feeling the energy coming off of them uh, i, I yeah. assume that you know people are gonna just want to cry every time they come out like the first time they come out and they see everybody and they see you know kids faces or you know the signs and 
people dressed as characters. Like, I just feel like that it's just going to be so damn emotional. Um, oh, I'm sure. I can't. I can't imagine. I mean, I'm probably. I, I mean, the first. Eventually, one day, the first day when I work a crowd that size, like I will probably go to the back and cry afterwards. I'll hide in a corner and I'll cry because of how much like all of the emotion I just felt. I won't let anybody see, but I'll be crying in a corner out of happiness. Old Greg Ch said, "I missed the chance." Right. Um, one one chant that I saw in the documentary was, "This is wrestling." At the end, when Thunder Rosa was doing her speech, and that sounded uh that was just, that hit home that. That was just so amazing to hear. So last time we spoke, when we did Hell Hath No Fury, we spoke at length about the importance of this company and the importance of the future of women's wrestling, as well as the present of women's wrestling. You are in the tournament, and you will be competing to move on to become the first Mission Pro Wrestling champion. Uh, your career, like you said, has been really fast lately. And so you've got this momentum going you have this on your side. How do you how do you approach this with being the, the you know an inaugural champion to such an important company? I I mean I'm excited and I'm nervous and I mean that's part of the reason why I'm training so hard right now is um, I would love to be the first Division Pro champion. That would be a belt that I couldn't even imagine. I couldn't even imagine knowing what that feels like to carry something like that. Like to be a champion at a company is, is huge. Right. But then to be a champion at a company like mission pro, that's making so many big moves and to be the first champion that is, that is undeniable. Like that's something that you just, you experience once, you know, um, so that's why I'm training so hard right now. Cause that would be such an incredible, like it'd be so incredible. It'd be so crazy. It's such a pretty belt, too. It's such a perfectly... It's, it looks so, so nice. Mm -hmm. um, so are, are, you, are you just treating your first-round match... Are, are you not looking further than that match? Are you just preparing for that one match? Or are you thinking about going to the finals and taking it all? I'm prepared to go all freaking night. <laughs> like, I'm ready. Like, I've been... I'm, I'm ready to work. I mean, I know that things will be run back um, on December, in December, yeah. but uh, I'm definitely ready to go as far as I can go on the 6th. And um, if that means into the semifinals, if that means, like, whatever that means that night, like I, like I said, I'm training my butt off right now. That includes cardio and stamina and endurance and um, training for all these different women because the reality is, is I don't know who's going to move on, right? Yeah. Like, after I defeat Lacey, I don't know who's next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I did want to. I did want to ask, as a professional wrestler, as an athlete, is it a different approach to a possible second and third match of the night? I guess I, I mean it sucks because, like, the approach, in my opinion, is kind of it's the same because you really need to give it your all for 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 all the matches. Like, you can't just go in there and be like, "Oh, this is just first round." Like. Or, oh, I already did this. Now I got to go do it again. No, you got to go in there and be like, no, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm going to win in this first match. And then you got to go into the second one with a second win or third win or whatever you're at that night and be like, okay, now I'm going to win this match. And then, you know, if you're going to move on to the finals, you've just then – you, then you train even harder and you prepare even more. But I don't think that there's really any difference in the first, second, or third match aside from the fact of, you know, the third one actually being the championship match. But <laughs> – um, there's, there's no difference in how I would prepare for it. I would continue to train my butt off and I would go into each match with as much, um, energy and determination and, uh, strength and everything that I could. Like there, there'd be no hold back. I would work myself to death, <laughs> like just to get that far. <laughs> Do you have a person that you might be looking forward to the possibility of facing in the tournament? I'm trying to think of all. I mean, there's a there's a lot. Um, we got La Rosa Negra against. Allie. Yes, yes. You have yourself uh, against Lacey. And then it's Rachel mm -hmm. and. Uh, Rachel and Maddie. And Maddie. I can't choose right there. I, both of them. I know that one's hard. I'm afraid to. I'm afraid to choose because the other will be just just be upset with me. You know, I kind of like. I, I like. 
they're all incredible and amazing. Um, I did just have a match with Lodorosa Negria not that long ago. Uh, she was incredible to go against, and I'd love to work her again and get some redemption. Um, but I do have to say that I feel like since Maddie and I are both, you know, kind of newer to the scene, I'd love to get in there with her and mix it up and really just, like, just her and I, one-on-one, -on -one. no one else. Just her and I, and really just, just her and I. That's it. Just the well, yeah, because we did that fight. You know, we had a five-way match for the PPW Championship. Um, but I think that if it was just her and me, I think we could tear the house down. I think we'd have an amazing match. So that yeah, that, would... that was a that was a crazy match. Everybody spoke about that match the days after. Um, five-way is already when you're working with somebody what? else. You know, <laughs> it's tough enough to put a match together. Now you have four other women. So speaking of multiple people, you had a tag team match. At Hell Hath No Fury, um, how was that working with different personalities and you know uh, having a tag team partner? It was I mean I'm sure that that's obviously different than being in a singles competitor. Yeah, it, it's it's very different. Um, I like I like working tags. Like I mean I really love working singles, but I really do love working tags too. And it was really fun to get in there and mix it up with Jenna. Um, I think her and I have a lot of good you know kicking synergy. Um, but I, I really have to say that I, I love working against Kate and Promise. Like, talk about amazing competitors and amazing opponents. Like, they are rivals, really, incredible. but then they teamed up that night. Mm hmm. And they're good as a team. I know that they're like at each other's throats half the time, but they're good as a team. Like, they're really good as a team. Um, and uh, we would have had that if. Uh, if I hadn't been distracted by promise, I think that I would have been able to finish Kate off and take her out, but it's okay. It's okay. Uh, promise time. actually appeared on my last episode of my podcast because we did a whole tournament of uh, horror movies. Uh, we picked 64 horror movies and we had a tournament out of it. And we just, uh, her and a couple of my buddies, we just saw which one went, went to the next round. So if you guys want to check out, that one uh, check out my youtube channel dnc digital um it's a fun fun episode because we talk about all these horror movies and see which one uh moves on so i just have a few questions before uh before you you go um would you rather be stuck in jumanji or would you rather be stuck in jurassic park jurassic park easy that easy, was easy easy i there's uh, it, they're both scary like they're both horrible and, and and would be absolutely scary but like i don't know there's some nostalgia with jurassic park and i want to mm. see dinosaurs <laughs> <laughs> you look so serious when you said that <laughs> i'm not i'm not lying when when we saw um jurassic world that's the new franchise right my girlfriend always tells me she wants a baby raptor because of blue she's like i just want a baby raptor and i'm like we it's got like a lion it's going to eat your face <laughs> off one day. <laughs> um, here's a question I also asked her. Would you rather find the quickest parking spot and walk long, or would you find the closest parking spot and, you know, spend the possible amount of time finding that closer parking spot? Yo, I'm all about parking and walking. Like, I don't care. I'll walk far. I have no patience for people in a parking lot i'll tell you that right now i have i'm one of those people that i have road rage and so i have to minimize it i'm like hold your tongue alley just drive everything's gonna be fine this is only temporary like it's there's, uh, there's like 10 spots back there and they're all like trying to get the closer i'm like i just want to like, go in the damn store yeah me too and i'm like you know what i got legs i can walk let me use them like it's it's not like you know I'll, and me that's the other thing is like why not let like the people who might have more of a difficulty walking there or like people with kids or like, it's really not that big of a deal for me to get a close spot unless there's like a million close spots. And then I'll just be like, okay, whatever. But I am not fighting someone for a spot. Mm -mm. And all that walking will get you uh, all set up with the cardio and stamina to go all the way and mission pro wrestling tournament out of hell. You see how I did that? That was a good segue. I like that. That was a good, uh, that was a good segue there. Uh, mission oh. pro wrestling tournament out of hell. November 6th, it is a week from Friday. I will be there selling my T-shirts and doing interviews and having a bunch of fun. Vert, I'm going to hold you to it. you got to buy one of my shirts. Um, so, uh, okay, we can, we, can, we, can, we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, just kidding. Just, just like Vert said, uh, social distancing will be enforced um, every six feet. Masks are required to, to uh, come in. Temperatures will be taken at the door. Um, if you are uncomfortable... 
and that is totally understandable. It will be streaming live on the Title Match Network November 6th. Follow everybody. If you're following Vert, follow me right here. If you're following me, follow Vert right there. Uh, we are all one big happy family, and I am honored, honored, honored to be a part of this because it is something cool that my daughter can look up to because Ooh. Nicki Minaj and Cardi B are not doing that shit for her. Um, because, no, I'm not, I'm not letting her listen to that. I'm, no, we're not going <laughs> to. You better change that fucking radio. No. no. She is no. 11 years old, and she is going to okay. stay that way. Um, Forever. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of strong, <laughs> badass women uh, who are now competing to be the first Mission Pro Wrestling champion. Tournament out of hell. I can't say it enough. Everybody have a great night, and take care of yourselves. Bye, guys.